In a previous video, I used this variable resistor or potentiometer to help me diagnose a concern with a faulty fuel gauge. Well, in this video, I'll be showing how you can put together your own variable resistor or potentiometer and some of the other uses these little guys are good for. So without getting too in-depth, how these variable resistors work is this outside pin to this outside pin, that's its total resistance across the internal uh, circuitry inside, if you call it that. This outer pin to the middle pin, now it's variable. You can turn this knob and it'll go from a 10K, which that's what this is, a 10K ohm resistor, uh, to zero. So zero to 10, it'll fluctuate. If you go from this other outside to the middle, it'll do the opposite. So if this goes from zero to 10K, this other side will go from 10K to zero. But again, it's just a turn of the knob and you have that whole sweeping range of zero to 10K. But if you just do the outside, you get the full 10K resistance. So some of the things you'll need is your uh, potentiometer or variable resistor. You can get these on Amazon pretty cheap, five to $10, you can get a whole pack. It came with like a trillion in this pack. And this is zero to 10K. And that's what I recommend for automotive use. They also have 5K, you know, 1K, larger, 100K. But this seems to be a, a nice, good middle ground, 10K. This also has a zero to 10K in one revolution. I recommend, I didn't know that when I bought these, but I recommend uh, getting one that can turn uh, multiple times to go from its zero to 10K. It's just more fine tuned. So like on this, a little turn adjusts its resistance a lot. Where on this, a little turn adjusts it a little. So it's just more, more fine tuned, I suppose. So you need your resistor, you need your wire. I like two different colors. You don't have to have two different colors, uh, but just some, you know, 18 gauge wire is fine. 20 gauge is, is fine, 16, you know, somewhere in that, that range. Solder, soldering gun, and if you want, I didn't bring it out here, but some tips, and I'll, I'll show you that later, but like alligator clips or something like that work really good for um, the ends of these. So I'm gonna get myself two yellows and one blue, because we're gonna use all three pins. So the two yellows are gonna be my outside, two yellows for my outside, so that's the full potential. 10K, and then the blue will be my middle, and that'll allow me to sweep from zero to 10K. And just having different wire colors helps me differentiate, so it makes putting things together when I'm getting ready for diagnosing that much easier. So just strip a little off. So now we'll solder the wires, just one to each terminal. Well, so there we go. We have our three wires soldered on. If this is a tool you're gonna be using and wanna be proud of it, you can make it look better than I did. So now, let me pull this side off and we can put our tips on it. So for my, my ends, I'm gonna go ahead and just use alligator clips, two reds and a black, not because there's powers and grounds, just to keep them separated. So the two reds will go on my yellow and then the black will go uh, right on my blue. And again, that's just for me so I can really quickly determine uh, where my two ends are and then where the sweeper is. All right, so there's the final product. So just to show you what I was talking about, how the two ends are its total resistance and then the middle is the sweeper. Uh, if we go ahead and hook up our set on ohms to the two yellow leads, now it gives our total resistance 9.33K or 9,330 ohms. 
And no matter how much I move this, get it more on the camera. Oh, my lead came off. Hold on. So no matter how much I move this, I'm not changing my ohms. That's because it's just the total resistance. And if you look on one I pulled apart, that lead and that other outer lead, it's that whole, I don't know if you can see, well, it's kind of like a black, that's a carbon track. So that whole carbon track goes along. That middle lead takes a shortcut. So when you turn it, let me turn it, you can see that kind of changing, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but you see that little sweeper arm moving across that carbon and it's taking a shortcut. So instead of having to follow the road all the way along, you can follow it only halfway or a quarter way. And that's what that middle lead does. So now let's change one of these to the blue. So I have one yellow lead, one blue lead, and now we're at zero ohms. If I change the dial, see how my ohms are changing. Now I'm changing it counterclockwise and the ohms are going up. And now I'm full ohms. If I change it clockwise, ohms are going down. That's important because, let me switch the yellow leads, it'll do the opposite. So now I'm all the way to the right, fully up. If I go counterclockwise, now I'm lowering the ohms. Clockwise, I'm raising the ohms. So it does the same thing. Whether you're on the left side or the right side, it raises and lowers, but it, they just do them oppositely. So now we have our sensor built, and we kind of understand how it operates. Just turning the knob changes its uh, resistance. So now let's run to the car and try it on a couple sensors. We'll do a temperature sensor. Those are just thermistors, so as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases, or as the temperature decreases, the resistance increases. That's called NTC uh, thermistor, negative temperature uh, coefficient. When it comes to temperature sensors, they're all very similar. Variable resistor or potentiometer like this can pretty much work with most uh, temperature sensors, whether it's the intake air temp sensor, the ambient air temp sensor, the coolant temp sensor. Uh, some vehicles will use a thermistor inside the evaporator core for the AC to know when to turn on the compressor, when to turn off the compressor. This can be substituted in there for that as well. I use it for a fuel gauge. That's not a, a thermistor, but just a two wire variable resistance. So that was uh, pretty easy for one of these to plug into. Sometimes position sensors can be used. In that instance, you'll need uh, all three of the wires. And I'll show you that on this vehicle. The little asterisk with that is not all position sensors uh, operate the same. So it just depends on the circuitry of the position sensor. But definitely um, temperature sensors for sure. Uh, these work really good. And then some position sensors just depends. All right, well, let's hop on the vehicle. I've jabbered enough. Uh, let's get some testing and, and see the value of one of these. So now we're set up at the car. I have it plugged into the intake air temp sensor. I have the data here, the PIDs for it. Got the resistor ready to go. Right now it's on full resistance, 10K. It believes the temperature is 80 degrees. So at 10K, temperature is 80. As I decrease the resistance, that temperature should climb. So let's watch these numbers as I turn this counterclockwise. You can see our temperature going up. Now I'm at 111 degrees. My voltage changes as well. I put the uh, resistance back all the way up. Let's go ahead and show this on a graph. And you can see what it did. So I'm going to decrease resistance and watch the temperature increase. and then back. So that fluctuation in the temperature, that's me. So that's pretty cool. So just by doing this, I've tested the entire circuit side of this sensor. The wires are capable of carrying a signal and the computer is capable of interpreting that signal into a degrees. 
So now we're hooked into a different sensor. I have it connected to the throttle position sensor. And I'm going to be using all three of these wires. Now again, it does depend on the sensor in order for this to work. On this vehicle, this is a Dodge. It does work this way. I have the PID for the throttle position sensor, TPS percentage, and TPS volts. As I move this dial, you'll watch the percentage on the TPS. So just moving it a little, now it thinks it's at 18% throttle. 55, 56% throttle. 98% throttle, and we can graph this as well. So this is changing because I'm changing the resistance. So now we're on even a different sensor, and this is just gonna demonstrate some of the limitations that these have. So this is the manifold absolute pressure sensor. This vehicle uses a map and not a mass airflow to calculate how much air is coming into the engine. You can see I have the vacuum You can see I have the vacuum up here and then the voltage down here. Watch when I change the resistance. See the voltage changes, but not my vacuum. And we can graph this. So my vacuum does not change, but my volts change. So I'm not able to test everything that this sensor is capable to send to the PCM or the engine computer. So that's a limitation. Well, there you go. That's how you can put together your own variable resistor and some of the sensors that it can be used for. Now, it doesn't work on all sensors that utilize a variable resistance, but it does work on a wide range of sensors on your vehicle. Is it worth putting in your toolbox? Well, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.